uh, let's bring in Fred McLeod. He is the TV play-by-play -play voice of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Fred, thanks for joining us via Skype. And um, oh. Fred, we, we just saw the highlights from uh, from the game yesterday. Uh, wait, yesterday or Saturday? I, I'm losing track of time. Yes, yes. yesterday. That's right. Yeah. And and we're wondering about the Cleveland coach. And I know there's been a lot of debate <laughs> in Cleveland about him. And I, are you questioning his strategy at the end of this game at all? No, because uh, I'll take you back to uh, March, if you remember maybe one of the games of the year in San Antonio. And uh, LeBron inbounded twice, and Kyrie Irving hit two huge shots, one that uh, forced overtime and the other that won in overtime, and nobody raised an eyebrow. Uh, listen, there's a lot of give and take in, in any time I title in any situation. Granted, you want the best player in the world to either uh, touch it, inbound it, get it back, but – but David has an open policy, as most coaches do. Okay, your superstar, do you like that? No. This wasn't a case of a dictatorship of a coach saying, this is the only thing we're going to do, like it or lump it. No, it was an open discussion, and LeBron said, no, I put the ball in my hands. I'm, I'm going to get it done. So uh, I, I don't see a big deal about it. Uh, the timeout, he made a mistake. He owned up to it. And, um, you know, maybe you chalk it up a little bit to the uh, international experience versus the NBA. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll learn from that. He, he's a very sharp guy, very perceptive guy, and a guy that uh, really uh, takes a lot of pride in having uh, strong relationships with his players. Fred, this is Woody, and thanks for joining us. But I, I, hey, I agree with most of what you said. I think, though, that the, having covered basketball for, for a long time, going back into the 60s, actually, that the guy you should always be afraid of is the guy who takes the ball out of bounds because there's a very good chance he's going to get the ball back because he's the guy that's going to be kind of left uncovered. In regard to the timeout situation, that's why one of the reasons you have assistant coaches. And, and right. as was pointed out to, today, that his assistant coach calls most of the timeouts, and so it was it, that was an unusual situation. Do you think we had been seeing this lean as you have, a lot closer than we have, this was leaning toward Chicago. Do you think that was enough to get the lean back to Cleveland that a lot of people were beginning to question the Cavaliers of whether they were going to beat the Bulls? Well, it, it, it's such a hair difference between these teams, as you know, Woody, just because of uh, the injuries. Now, Gasol, of course, that adds another element to it. Uh, no Kevin Love and whatever the percentage is for Kyrie, whether it's 50, 60, 70 percent, he's not the same. So, uh, and having already lost Kevin Love, you know, the playing field is really balanced now. And it's, and it's a matter of attrition. You know, LeBron said he looked at the ankle twist yesterday, and, and frankly, he doesn't know how he finished the ballgame. So you've got that. Taj Gibson came up lame at the end. Uh, it is, and as we've seen throughout these playoffs, as you guys know, it's just crazy the number of key injuries to key guys. And, and that's why I've always thought, You've got to be lucky to win a championship. And, and thinking on top of your head, and I'm trying to, I've done this 32 years in the NBA, I can't think of a champion that has won the title with a rash of injuries. San Antonio in those five years, pretty much healthy. Michael Jordan, you know, Scotty Pippen had the migraine the year before they won a title. But by and large, to win a title, you've got to have most of your pieces, if not all of them, healthy and ready to go. So well, I because of yeah. uh, the injuries right now, this series is dead even, and, and the Cavs hope to uh, take advantage of home court. Yeah, and I have a theory about that, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to ask you with your experience that you depend in the playoffs on eight guys usually. Right. Maybe nine. You're not using the th last group. Th so you can do that during the course of the season. So if you take away one of those eight guys you, or two, in the case of with JR out for the first two games because of the suspension, Kevin Love out, you are really shortening your bench. Now you're going to guys that you didn't really depend on to help you out. So I think you're totally right in terms of if you look back, it's been teams that have been fortunate enough not to have injuries. And I think that's true in hockey. Uh, I really see it in football that if you have a rash of injuries that that you've got to have depth uh, deep depth, as I call it, in order to win, particularly in the NBA championship. Well, and then, too, what factors into it is the salary cap. When you've got three max players, you're not going to have the luxury of having a 15-man roster with guys who are also all-stars. You've got role players. Miami, in that group, think about it, with Bosch and Wade and LeBron, there was a drop-off talent-wise, and they had to fill those holes, and they did, and they won a couple titles and got to four NBA finals. So, uh, it, it's still the best course of action if you're trying to win a title to have, have stars like that. But it is tougher to have that kind of depth. 
And uh, I guess you and I are probably old enough to remember the Golden State Warriors of the 70s when they won a title with uh, with a 10-man rotation. So that that is not the norm, but uh, that certainly would be a luxury. And, and in fact, this year's Golden State team is awfully deep too. So it's uh, it's a fascinating experience to watch, and these playoffs continue to get better and better as these rounds go on. Sure, Fred, and I'm sure you remember as I do the 50s. <laughs> I just I'm kidding you. I do remember this I, the Celtics. I remember those great series. Right. We're hoping for, and, I, and and that's bringing me to a point. I would love to see the Cavaliers against either the Clippers or the Warriors, and it's just a personal opinion in the finals, because I just think that would be such exciting, flowing basketball, and it, it would come down, as we've seen over the weekend, such such great games. And and I'm wondering, in your mind, let's let's take you a little bit, that, that Cleveland were to end up getting to the NBA Finals. What would be the best team, in your mind, from an objective vision, that not that they would win the championship, but that would make for a great, great historical-type Magic Bird kind of series? Well, obviously, you know, when you got the reigning MVP and, and Steph Curry and, and LeBron, a four-time winner, that's, that's a pretty saucy uh, headliner right there. Chris Paul, of course, a great player and such a close friend and uh, contemporary LeBron James, that's another one. Uh, you know, Memphis is a different dynamic, but uh, but still a very very good basketball team and and fun to watch. And you tip your hat with the, the style with which they play. Houston may be uh, you know kind of a tough scenario now with with how they are down in the series. But uh, in terms of you know the Cleveland fan base, I think they they feel they got a shot. They they blew out Memphis in March when the the Grizzlies were really playing well. Of course, the Cavs had Kevin Love then. Uh, they beat the Clippers twice. And uh, Golden State in their trip in here in March, they really shut down Curry and uh, and Thompson. So, but a whole different dynamic because that's regular season versus postseason. And obviously the Cavs are not uh, at full strength. But any series that has LeBron James in it, obviously is going to get uh, eyeballs. And uh, I think uh, all those possible three matchups, we're, we're assuming the Rockets don't make it, would be intriguing. Well I, well, I hope we find one matchup at the finals where we aren't seeing whack-a-mole in three-hour games. Yeah, all I agree. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's tough to watch, and it, it, it's. A, I think the NBA is going to have to do something about it. It, it. I know it's within the rules, but it's not fun to watch, and it's it, it's becoming an epidemic right now. And it's. Uh, I don't know what you guys feel if you've talked about it, but it's. Uh, it's just not pleasing to watch. And maybe there's a, a different way to uh, penalize the team. I don't know what it would be. That's, sure. Well, uh, it, it's simple. The college rule, uh, particularly in the fourth quarter, you get two shots and you get possession. And I think that. I think right. guys should learn how to shoot free throws. I mean, that's my first thought, but they're not going to because they don't care about it. So then you got to make a rule and make it like the college rule where you just give them possession again. So it, that ends right. people fouling. You can do it probably early in the game. Fred, it's been great having you on, it, it, and, I, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy the rest of the playoffs. And we love – is that your office? You, we, we uh, it see, is, yes. We can see the Cavaliers press guide in the background. I, li I yeah, like press that. press guide, yeah. and up above, Woody, I've got uh, – Media guys or uh, media badges from uh, the career of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So it's it's been fun to, uh, as you guys have, uh, to be a part of this wonderful uh, career that we've chosen. And uh, just moments like yesterday, we were at the watch party at the at the uh, Quicken Loans Arena, and the way it erupted. It's one of those uh, you know memories that you'll have forever because it was an iconic moment and LeBron winning a game shot. One of the one of the biggest shots and biggest sports moments, frankly, in Cleveland history. I, I have kept all my press passes from the 60s, and so Fred has too. And I have good friends that are in the business. They sell them. <laughs> so we, I don't know whether they're stupid or we're stupid because they're, they're running around with a lot of money. You'd get a lot of yeah. money for those. <laughs> so, yeah. hey, Fred, maybe, maybe it'll come today like like you, like you sell a championship ring, and I've got three of those from Detroit, but those, those I'll never part with. Yeah. But, the, but the badges can be replaced, I guess. Uh, how, do, how do people follow you on Twitter if you're involved in that, and how do they follow you when they're not watching you somehow do the games for the Cavaliers? I'm um, at, at Cavs, Fred McLeod, M-C-L-E-O-D, and we do a lot with uh, Cavs.com, and uh, we're, we're very uh, aggressive as an organization in terms of uh, – video and, and written material on the website and uh, and on Twitter as well. So uh, and we'll, we'll follow you guys as well. We appreciate all your time, Fred. Thanks, Thank you. Fred. Thanks. Fred McLeod, the, the uh, TV play-by-play -play man for the Cleveland Cavaliers, coming to us via Skype. That segment sponsored by John Elway Chevrolet, Colorado's number one Chevy dealer.